Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, it's been a long time. All right. Now today I have uh, prepared a video about friction. All right. Now uh, this is the one of the topic found in the mechanics nine seven zero nine Cambridge uh, A level mathematics. All right. <clears throat> now in general, what is friction? Okay, we're going to explore um, the entire process of how friction work. Now, in general, friction is a force, of course. It is a force that uh, opposes uh, any relative motion between the system in contact. Okay, let's get going. I'm going to show you how friction behave and then what are the formula involved in it. Let's get going. Alright, welcome back. Uh, here I'm going to show you uh, simulations of how this um, friction would actually behave. What you're looking at right now is um, a weight of a fine newton that is resting on a rough surface. And then uh, we are going to uh, exert a horizontal force to the right onto this object here. And then uh, try to find out how much force we need to actually move this object or to set this object in motion. All right, let me illustrate to you here. Okay, hold on. All right, now you can see that we apply certain force now, increasingly, and then uh, boom, you can see that, yes, we have uh, successfully set the object in motion. But we found that there is a certain uh, amount of force or somehow we call this uh, the maximum force that we need to exert in order to set the object in motion. And then uh, once the object in motion, we notice that there will still be a friction, frictional force that is acting on the object there. All right. Now you can see that. Let me continue with that. All right, so there will still be a frictional force acting on the object. And then uh, that frictional force is constant as the object is in motion. All right. Okay, now I'm going to show you in more detail how this uh, friction behave and then what are the formula involved um, in the calculations of friction here. So stay tuned. Now, next I'm going to show you the detail and then the formula that involve in the calculations of uh, frictional force. All right. So here, let me run through the simulation one more time. Just give you a sense of how uh, this friction work. Okay, let's do this. All right, you can see that we apply um, certain increasing force until the point when the object start to slide. All right, that is the point when the object start to slide there. All right, now what you are looking at right now is we are looking at uh, initially before the object start to move, um, we have to apply a certain amount of force uh, just to overcome the surface adhesion uh, between the block and the surface there. So before the object can actually slide, there is a certain uh, temporary bonding between the surface of the block and the uh, rough surface in contact. So in order to overcome this temporary uh, bonding or adhesion that we are talking about here, uh, now we need to apply certain amount of force. And then that maximum amount of force that we need to apply before we can set the object in motion, um, there is a name for that. We call that limiting equilibrium. So this is the conditions uh, at which we are able to set the object in motion. And then this condition is called the limiting equilibrium condition. And then uh, this also gives us an idea what would be the maximum force uh, that we need to exert 
at the point when the object is about to slide. So limiting equilibrium is actually a point uh, that indicate the force, the maximum uh, amount of force that we need to apply before or at the point before the object start to slide. So if we apply a little bit more force, more than the maximum force uh, at the limiting equilibrium, then the object will start to slide. Right? So that is called limiting equilibrium. And then, now before the object is set in motion, we notice that uh, the force that we apply is sort of linear. So there is a linear relations here. You can see that the force is increasing. So if you apply like uh, 1 Newton here, uh, then the frictional force that is exerted on the block itself is also 1 Newton. Right? So if we apply 1 Newton here, then the frictional force exerted um, between the surface and the block is also 1 Newton. Now if you keep on increasing this particular force to like 1.5, Right, and then the force exerted on the uh, surface between the block um, and the rough surface is also 1.5 Newton. So we can see that there is a relation between the force exerted and the uh, frictional force here. So we can say that there is a linear relationship between the force exerted and the frictional force. So we can conclude that the frictional force is directly uh, proportional to the force exerted at this point before the object is set in motion. All right? Now, next, I'm going to show you how or what is the formula used to calculate the frictional force here. All right. <clears throat> now, before we do that, uh, just try to recap the block has a weight so we label that weight as um, w here and then the weight is given by the mass multiplied by gravitational field strength now that all depends on the uh, question in the exam sometime the g that is used in the exam could be 9.8 newton per kilogram or sometime we approximate that to 10 newton per kilogram Right? So all you need to do is just look at the right uh, gravitational field strength to use to calculate the weight. And then, due to Newton's third law, every action there is a reaction. So therefore, uh, this would actually give us um, another force that is uh, acting in the opposite directions to the weight. This is known as the normal force. And then I will denote the normal force as R here. All right. Now that would be the amount of uh, force that is exerted by the ground onto the block. And then this normal force um, usually in our case is the same as the weight. Which is mg in this case. All right. <clears throat> All right. Now I hope that is clear. Next. How much frictional force is actually acting uh, between the block and the rough surface then? All right. Now, according to the uh, observations that we have done, uh, there is a limiting equilibrium that uh, the force need to overcome, or we need to overcome the adhesion uh, between the object and the surface before the object can be set in motion. Now, therefore, uh, this limiting equilibrium has this um, inequality. We mentioned that as uh, the frictional force here. So I will denote FR as a frictional force is less than or equal to mu R, where the mu is known as coefficients of friction. So here I will write it down the mu is known as coefficient of friction all right okay uh, now this coefficient of frictions uh, usually has a, a, a fixed value 
right which will be given in the exam there and then what is the significance of this coefficient of friction coefficient of friction basically tell us uh, the roughness uh, of the surface itself like how rough it is the more rough the surface is the larger the value of the coefficient of friction and then uh, the limiting equilibrium tells us that um, we have a maximum frictional force uh, acting on the surface which is um, at this particular value given by mu multiplied by the normal force here or sometimes we can write that as fr is less than or equal to mu mg uh, that depends on uh, the component of normal force that is acting on the object at that point uh, in our context here yes it is the same as mg here all right and then that is known as the uh, conditions or the maximum uh, value of frictional force that could be acting on the block before the block can set in motion now if you set any value of uh, force here if you set any value of force forward force that is less than that is less than the limiting equilibrium condition then the block will still stay in stationary if you set the forward force be greater than the limiting equilibrium condition then the object will be set in motion All right now if you set the forward force at the point where its value is approximately the same as the limiting equilibrium uh, condition then we said that uh, the object is at the point of about to move all right so it hasn't started to move yet but it's about to move because uh, we have exert uh, a maximum force which is uh, the same as the uh, force of the frictional force that is uh, currently at the maximum value right so i hope that is clear the most important part to take uh, in this case is there is um, limiting equilibrium uh, frictional force that is acting on the block itself now the force that you exerted is directly proportional to the frictional force before uh, the force is set uh, before the block is set in motion all right so i hope that is clear at this point all right now stay tuned for the next section now the next section is what will happen once the object is set in motion okay now once the object is set in motion you can see that from these simulations here uh, there will still be a friction that is acting on the block all right now now in general uh, in practice the frictional force that is acting on the block while the block is in motion usually is less than the limiting equilibrium uh, condition uh, but um, in the exam itself uh, for mechanics especially we uh, they make assumptions we are going to they make assumptions that we will be uh, using uh, the assumptions used here would be the maximum uh, limiting equilibrium value for the frictional force so even though in reality uh, the frictional force that is acting on the object while the object in motion usually is less than the maximum frictional force that is exerting on the block at the limiting equilibrium all right so to recap again we have the limiting equilibrium condition that is given by this right now that limiting equilibrium position is located somewhere here once it's set in motion there will still be a frictional force that is acting on the block in reality the frictional force usually is less than the uh, maximum uh, frictional force that is acting at the limiting equilibrium uh, but for the exam purpose they would always assume that the while the object is in motion the frictional force that is acting on a block is the same as the 
value of the friction at the limiting equilibrium. So I just want you to know that for exam purpose, uh, we are using the maximum frictional force at the limiting equilibrium while the object is in motion. So when the object is in motion, there will still be a friction that is acting on the object. And then this frictional force that is acting on the object is given by F equal to mu r here. As I mentioned before, when the object is set into motion, uh, the frictional force that is acting on the block is the maximum frictional force uh, at the limiting equilibrium, which is mu r in this case, because the maximum value for the frictional force that can be exerted on the block is given by mu r here. All right. So in this case, we have a forward force. As long as the forward force is greater than the limiting equilibrium in our conditions here, when it is in motion, so in motion, the requirement would be the forward force has to be greater than the limiting equilibrium condition. I think I said this as R previously. Uh, it has to be greater than the limiting equilibrium. When that happens, we will uh, have a resultant force. So you can see that the resultant force is given by the forward force subtract off with the frictional force. And then if you still recall from Newton's second law, this resultant force would uh, produce an acceleration, which is given by A here. All right. Now if you are interested to find out how this object would accelerate, how fast it would accelerate, all we need to do is just rearrange this we will have the acceleration given by this equation here. All right. Now, that's how the object behave before uh, the object is set in motion and after the object has been set in motion. All right. I hope that is clear here. All right. We're going to move on to the next section where I'm going to show you a few examples how to apply uh, this concept of frictional force. Example. All right. I'm going to show you uh, how do we apply the frictional force formula with the limiting equilibrium conditions onto this uh, next example here. <coughs> now what you're looking at is we have a, a block uh, that has a weight given by uh, the mass multiplied by G that is a normal force indicated by this uh, n here and this is the weight All right <clears throat> now in this case uh, we make assumptions that the mass the mass is uh, 2.5 kg all right 2.5 kg uh, therefore if we use the gravitational field strength as 10 for approximation so from here, we notice that the weight, uh, the weight of this object would be 25 Newton uh, for ease of calculation here. All right. And then for this example, uh, we have chosen the um, coefficients of friction as 0 0.5. Okay. All right. So how are we going to find out whether whether this object would stay in stationary or whether whether the object will be in motion then all right now that is all based on the forward force that we're going to apply later which is indicated by tx now first of all um, in order to analyze this uh, problem here we have to calculate the normal force so the normal force in this case uh, you can either use N or R in this case. So since we are using N, so N is given by the weight component, which is the same as 25 Newton in this case. Therefore, the limiting equilibrium, always start from limiting equilibrium condition. Where the frictional force, Fk here, Okay, is less than equal to 0 
multiply by the normal force and then our normal force is 25 here so we we'll put in 25 and then that will give us um, a one point so let's see here we have uh, 12.5 uh, let me see half here will be 12.5 right so 12.5 Newton okay so I hope that is clear what you're looking at right now is the maximum frictional force that can be um, exerted between the block and the surface is 12.5 Newton. If we were to apply a forward force of let's say um, let's say 10, 10 Newton, uh, you can try to figure out what will happen to the block. All right. So the answer is the block will stay in motion. Reason? Because uh, the forward force applied here is less than because the forward force applied in this case is less than less than the maximum frictional force. Therefore the object will still be in motion. And then um, the amount of frictional force that will be exerted on the block when you apply 10 Newton would be 10 Newton because we know that uh, before the block is set in motion the frictional force is directly proportional to the force that you exerted all right i hope that is clear for the first um, condition when the object is um, in stationary now next what if we set the object in motion how can we set the object in motion we can set the object in motion by applying a force that is greater than the limiting equilibrium frictional force. Right? So take for instance, we try to exert a force of 20 Newton. Now we know that 20 Newton is much more greater than the maximum frictional force at the limiting equilibrium. Now we know that Tx is greater than the maximum frictional force at the limiting equilibrium. Therefore, uh, we can set the object in motion All right, because it's greater than that. All right. So how would the object behave then if the forward force is greater than the uh, maximum frictional force? All right. We can apply Newton's second law. In this case, we notice that 20, the resultant force would be given by this mass multiplied with acceleration and then here we have uh, we can find the accelerations from here by just substituting all the value that we have uh, we know that when the object is set in motion the frictional force that is acting on the block would be the same as the maximum frictional force at the limiting equilibrium which is 12.5 and then that will be divided by the mass 2.5 there and then from there you will be able to um, analyze what is the acceleration on the block when the force the forward force is greater than the frictional force right so i hope that is clear there is a second conditions when the object is set in motions by having a forward force that is greater than the maximum frictional force at the limiting equilibrium. All right. The calculation I will leave it to you for the acceleration. All right. Now stay tuned for the next example. Example here um, would be an example for you to discuss in your uh, class, right? Or for you to discuss uh, with your friends and so on, right? Now before we get started with this. I'm trying to explain what we are looking at. You have a block that has a mass. All right, I'll write down all the information here. You have a mass of 2.5 kg. We assume that the g is 10 newton per kg. All right, and then uh, the block is in contact with a rough surface, and then uh, the coefficients of restitutions as usual we will set as 0 0.5 but this time the force that is acting on the block is set 
in this particular direction and then we will set this force to be T for instance as 20 Newton <coughs> okay so set it as 20 Newton so this is the first question here if the T is set to 20 Newton and then you are going to find out right so here determine the questions will be determine um, whether determine whether the block will set in motion right so your first task is to figure out if the force acting uh, in that particular direction is set um, to exert on the block will the block be set in motion or not if it does if it does right assuming that calculate the acceleration if it is in motion all right, so there you have a first question here and then the second question. The first one is to determine whether the block will set in motion. So you have to use the limiting equilibrium conditions to check whether it will be set in motion or not. Secondly, if it is in motion, uh, then you are going to calculate its acceleration. For the first case with tension or the force, forward force as 20 Newton. All right. So that's the first um, questions for you to discuss on. Now the second question here is, second question if if I change, if I change the force to now, I change it to 40 Newton, right? What will happen to the block? Uh, the same task that you are going to perform here is to determine whether the block will set in motion or not. If now we set the force to 20, if it does, then you are going to calculate the acceleration if it is in motion. All right. So I hope that um, by doing this simple example, you would get a better understanding of how friction works. Of course, uh, I will post the answer for this um, in the next video right? after uh, you have been given some time to process your thought and then uh, think about this. Right? So thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys again.